All right, moving right along, this is section 7.5, exponential functions. For an exponential function, uh, we have anything with the form y equals a times b to the x. So this is the same thing we've been dealing with all along. You've got a coefficient, you've got a base, and you've got an exponent. Um, but in this case, the variable is actually in the exponent instead of the variable being in the base. So typically, your base will be a number, and your variable will be the variable x in the exponent. So this is the equation that we're going to be modeling. b has to be positive in this situation and not equal to 1. So these are nonlinear functions, and they approach but never cross the y-axis. So your function will be increasing or growing any time uh, your a value is positive and your b value is larger than 1. Okay, And there'll be exponential decay or decreasing in size any time your coefficient is positive but your b value is a fraction, is less than 1, somewhere between 0 and 1. So if you stick a little number in here, you're going to have a function that decreases, and it will look, if you think about a graph, it'll look like this, getting smaller. And if you have a graph for something with a large number here, bigger than 1, it'll be growing. It'll start off, and it will go up like that. So exponential growth is growing really rapidly upward. Exponential decay is decreasing really rapidly downward. <coughs> in both cases, remember the value of b is a positive number, but it could be less than 1 or greater than 1, and the exponent will be an x. Okay, If the coefficient is negative, the graph is flipped vertically upside down. We're going to deal with this a lot more when we learn about transformations of functions, but just be aware for now that, let me go back here, typically for these in the basic level that we're going to be looking at them, your coefficient should be a positive number. Okay. The next thing is uh, when you want to find a y-intercept, we have already learned how to find y-intercepts, and we always find the y-intercept by setting x equal to 0. So we'll do the same thing here, and just something special to remember is that anything to the 0 power is 1, and so because the exponent is your variable x, when you set x equal to 0, you're setting the exponent equal to 0, which makes the overall um, result of that piece a 1. And then when you want to make a graph, for now, we're just going to do graphs using t-tables. Uh, and know that they go off the page very quickly because the numbers are getting large or small so fast that you want to make your axis scale, maybe count by tens or fives or something like that. So a couple of quick examples. Graph one-tenth to the x. So let's make a table here. We've got x and y. Uh, when x is 0, we have anything to the 0 is just 1. Okay, when x is 1, we have an output of 1 tenth. When x is 2, we have an output of 1 tenth squared, which is 1 tenth times 1 tenth, which is 1 over 100. When x is 3, you can see the pattern, it's going to be 1 over 10 to the third, which is 1 over 1,000. So here's our axis. So 0, comma, if we're counting by 1s, that'll go there. The next one is 1 tenth, which is really low. The next one is 1 one hundredth, which is really, really low. And the next one is 1 one thousandth. So this function is decreasing, and it's basically almost zero, right? Very, very quickly. So here's a 1, here's a 2, here's a 3. So very, very rapidly it gets low. What happens in the negative side? What if I say a negative 1? Then I have here 1 tenth to the negative 1. 1 tenth to the negative 1. Remember that a negative 1 means, a negative exponent means flip it. So flip this over and we get out 10. So a negative 1, I'm going to have to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So my function is skyrocketing. If I had a negative 2, uh, you can see that the pattern continues. This is going to be 100. So if I go back 2, I go up 100. I can't even come close to drawing that. So my graph comes down and this is called exponential decay because it starts extremely, extremely large, and then very, very rapidly it drops down to almost nothing. Every time I move forward one unit, I have t only one-tenth as much as I had before. So I go from 100 to 10 to 1 to one-tenth to one one-hundredth, etc. So I'm decreasing in value very, very rapidly. Um, <coughs> I'm only keeping 10% of what I had each time I move forward. Okay, next graph, y equals... 3 to the x. So again, we'll make a t-table. Uh, x, y. Let's go negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Start with the positives because they're easier. So anything to the 0 power is 1. 
3 to the first power is 3, 3 to the second power is 9, 3 to the negative 1 means flip it over, so I would get 1 third, 3 to the negative 2 is squared, but the negative means flip it over, so I get 1 ninth, and you see a reciprocating pattern here, 3 and 1 third, 9 and 1 ninth, etc. So over here I'll have negative 2 up 1 ninth, negative 1 up 1 third, 0, 1, 1, 3, and 2, 9. So that's a 9, that's a 3, and there's a 1. And so you can see that this function It starts off at almost zero, and then it skyrockets really, really large, really, really quickly. So you've heard of like bacteria growth, right? It looks like there's nothing, and there's nothing, and there's nothing, and there's nothing, and then like in one or two days, you go from almost nothing to a crazy, crazy large amount of bacteria. So things that grow exponentially um, are, are massively able to change their population in a short amount of time. Um, in this case, it's multiplying by three every cycle. So every time I move forward one unit, my population gets three times bigger, three times bigger, three times bigger. Okay, I'll skip some of the other graphs for now. This is just the basic idea of drawing your graph with a t-table. Exponential decay rapidly decreases. Exponential growth rapidly increases. Okay, and then here it says determine whether the set of data ex uh, it displays exponential behavior. When you have exponential behavior, you're either growing or declining by a constant ratio, by a certain amount every time. So to compare that, you can look and see, um, I, I look at the change here. So from here to here, I went up 3, and here I went down, what is this going to be, 480 minus 120 is... Okay. So you can see that if I were to graph these, let me go over here um, to an axis, at 2, I'm way up here at 480. And then when I go over a few and I'm at 5, there's 2, I've dropped down to only 120. And then I've dropped down to only 30. And then I've dropped down to only 7. So I'm dropping down really, really rapidly. And then if it kept going, you can see that this would flat, flatten out. So I don't have a constant drop here. Whereas if you compare this one, every time I change by 3 here, negative 3, negative 3, negative 3. This is negative 7, then negative 7, then negative 7. So if I were to plot this, I would get a sequence of dots that were a straight line. Okay? So we've already learned about this. This is linear uh, because it's a straight line, constant slope, constant rate of change. Here I have a changing rate of change, which is an indicator of exponential behavior. Okay? All right, that's it for this section. Uh, we're going to explore more about growth and decay in the next section and get some specific formulas to deal with that. See you then.